Chad Daybell's court has officially started for the trial of his life, literally. He's on trial for the death of his wife and two children and a few other charges, but it is a death penalty case. But today I didn't want to talk about Chad as much as I wanted to talk about his children. Let's talk about the unthinkable truth of why children believe their murderous parents. Now, remember, Chad has not been convicted yet. His trial is just beginning. His wife, who was charged with the same murders, has been convicted. So we can only assume that it's a high likelihood that he will be convicted as well. But the question I have is, why have his children stood by him? And we're gonna talk about the psychology of why that happens so often in these type of cases. Now I say these type of cases, this is original all of itself, but I'm talking about a parent who murders another parent and the children stand by them. So let's talk about it. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, A Life Without Parole. Today we're diving into a complex and heartbreaking topic. The psychology behind children who side with a parent who's accused of murdering the other parent. In this case, we're talking about Chad Daybell's children who believe their father Chad is wrongfully accused of murdering their mother Tammy Daybell. Chad Daybell's trial officially started on April 1st, which is fitting if you ask me. And when I say his trial, it's still in the jury selection process as of today. The idea that a child would defend a parent who's accused of committing such a horrific act seems to us illogical. But the fact is, it's actually quite common. And there are several reasons why this might happen. We're going to take a deep dive into the psychology to unpack the possible reasoning that seems impossible to comprehend. First, let's talk about Chad Daybell's allegations. Chad is a man who gained notoriety to his connection with the mysterious deaths of his wife, Tammy Daybell, and the two children of his second wife, Lori Vallow, who Again, as I said before, she's already been charged with their murders. First off, let's listen to an audio recording of Emma Murray, who is Chad Daybell's daughter. You'll get to understand some of her thought processes. The Fremont County Sheriff is who I called, and I left a voicemail at their office. I just wanted to know if I could see my mother's autopsy results. I I want to see them before they're released to the media. And Sheriff Humphreys returned my call, and he told me that if I work with Fremont County's head detective, I would be able to discuss it with them. But I was also told that he would not even be able to call me back until later the next week. And my brothers and sisters and I have been on pins and needles for over a year waiting to know what this report says. But I was told that the sheriff himself cannot let my mother's own children see an autopsy report until we all meet together with a detective and answer all of their questions. I don't understand why we would have to meet with a detective just to see a report. And it's something so private, personal, and sensitive that this isn't something that we would be going around talking about anyway. I just want to see the autopsy report. This is my mom. I, I don't think this is common knowledge, but the Fremont County Sheriff's Office reported the exhumation of my mother's body in December 2019, two weeks after the fact, through a public press release from the Rexburg Police Department. That's a city in a different county. They did not sit us down or anything and prepare us or let us know what was going on, but we found out that our mother had been exhumed I didn't even know what that word meant, but she was exhumed and we had no idea. While listening to this call, there's a couple of things that I 
deduced, and that is it doesn't sound like the children have been open to discussing what happened with their mother's death with the detectives. The second thing that I note is at this point in the case, the detectives did not know who was involved and who wasn't. He didn't know. I'm, I, I'm sure that the children were not cleared. So as hard as it is, you do have to do the diligence that it takes to find the truth. And I'm guessing that's what the detectives were trying to do. Let's talk about some of the reasoning behind this. First of all, children have a strong sense of dependency and love. Children have a fundamental need for love and security. They often see their parents as all powerful figures, especially when your father is a self-appointed prophet and seer and whatever he claims to be from his cult. Even an abusive parent can be a source of comfort, especially compared to the terrifying uncertainty of losing them altogether. Sometimes the thought of what the possibility of them doing is just too much for your brain to comprehend, so you just block it out. You won't allow it. There's a term in psychology called cognitive dissonance. This is the mental discomfort we experience when holding contradictory beliefs. Facing the truth about a parent's action can be incredibly disorienting. Denial or clinging to a distorted version of events can be a way to maintain a sense of stability. I mean, and especially if you throw in the fact that Chad had all these delusional visions, prophets receiving revelation. I mean, his cult, his version of the church, his children appeared to believe him fully. The whole doomsday prepper stuff that he was spewing at all his conferences for the very elite. Another thing is grooming and manipulation. The surviving parent may be adept at manipulating their children. They might rewrite history, badmouth the victim, or even make the child feel responsible for the murder. Over time, this can be incredibly effective, even for adult children. I, I think Garth Daybell, for me, is the most curious because he's the one who was with his dad when the 911 call was made regarding the death of his mother. During Lori's trial, it was revealed that the condition of Tammy's body did not, did not match up with the claims that she died in her sleep. Then, rolling over onto the floor, and made a thud sound when she hit the ground, which woke up Chad. This is his story. So he, he claims that after he heard her hit the floor, he called out for Garth to come and help him. But I mean, according to forensics, the body would have had to have been moved to that location. They figure out from the autopsy. Any lies that Chad said regarding that night Tammy died would have to be questioned by Garth but he doesn't appear to question his dad at all about that fateful night. There's still another possibility that might be going around through the minds, which is common in cases where the children are traumatized. Fear and shame. Children, again, even adult children, caught in this situation often experience intense fear and shame. They might be ashamed of what happened to their family this can make them reluctant to speak up or accept the reality of the situation. My question is, if the shame and the belief in the crazy cult teachings of their father is the reason the Daybill children still stand by their dad, it makes you wonder, will they continue this forever? Or as more and more comes out, Will they finally realize or will they just say, I don't want to know. I stand by him. 
it's important to remember that these children, even though they are adults, they are victims too. As far as all the evidence that came out in Lori's trial, they had nothing, nothing to do with the deaths of these people that Chad's charged of murdering. Since Chad was arrested for murder, Garth and his siblings have chosen to support their father unconditionally. It comes back to what we know about him as a man. And even insist that he's innocent. The siblings believe that their father was tricked by who? Lori Vallow. If this would have happened, if Lori Vallow had never come into my family's life. I first heard of her children when a detective came to my work and asked about them. I had never heard of them before that point. So even after your father weds Lori, you didn't know that there were two kids in the picture at that point? I did not. Your father was unable to answer the simple question of where are the children? Was that a moment where you questioned your father's innocence? Not my father. It goes back to what we know about him as a man as our father. He knew how to dig graves, and I, that just doesn't sound believable to me. I do know that if he were to commit a crime, he wouldn't be foolish enough to put the evidence in his own backyard. He was framed. Tricked by who? Lori Vallow. And that her accomplices, probably her brother, her niece, whoever, they're the ones responsible for Tylee and JJ's deaths. In order for them to continue to support their father, even though so much evidence was brought forward during Lori's trial, and I mean undoubtedly will be used during their father's trial as well, there are quite a few textbook psychological conditions that must be happening to Chad's children to keep them denying their father had anything to do with the crimes he's accused of. Now, it doesn't take a linguist to be able to read in the dictionary and say, here's the definition of an apple. I can see that this is an apple. And that's what I'm saying about this. The psychology is textbook. You can just read in the textbook. This is what things are. And you can see how they kind of line up. Let me give you an example. Let's start with the first one, denial. This is a common coping mechanism used to avoid the overwhelming emotional pain of a parent being murdered, being murdered or a parent being the murderer. Accepting the truth can be too difficult to bear, leading them to cling on to the belief that their parent is innocent. Number two, disassociation. The daybells may detach from the reality of the situation, creating a mental separation from the horrific act. This allows them to maintain a positive image of the accused parent. Number three, projection. Are the daybells projecting their own negative feelings onto Lori in order to justify the act in their minds? Number four, love and loyalty. The love for their dad, Chad, can be so strong that they refuse to believe that he is capable of murder. They may hold on to positive memories and downplay any negative ones. Number five, fear of abandonment. I'm sure they fear losing their dad. Who wouldn't? Accepting the truth could risk losing him. What's so ironic about this behavior is the children have distanced themselves from their own mother's families because they don't like the fact that Tammy's family were suspicious of their father, Chad. So by aligning with their father, they have broken ties with anyone who appears to go against their father. I personally noticed this when I went to the Lori Vallow Daybell sentencing. Based on the Daybell's interviews, meaning the Daybell children, they throw all the blame at Lori for the trouble that has come to their family. I was curious, if that was the way they felt, then you would think that they would be happy 
that she, meaning Lori, was found guilty of the crimes. I mean, if they totally believed that their father was innocent, I would, I would still be affected by the fact that children's bodies were found on their family's property and someone did it, I would want them to be brought to justice if it were me. In the case of the Daybell children, they thought Lori and her brother were to blame. It's hard to even comprehend. It's a nightmare for me every single day to even think about. Lives with so much potential and goodness and they're gone, they're ended. None of this would have happened if Lori Vallow had never come into my family's life. They thought Lori and her brother were to blame. And if that's true, why do they not celebrate when Lori was found guilty? The rest of us certainly did. I went to the sentencing of Lori Vallow after she was found guilty on all charges. I noticed that all those who were in attendance were were in a celebratory mood because we felt that justice was finally prevailing. JJ's grandparents even thanked all the media and everyone who kept this story in the headlines until justice for JJ, Tylee, and Tammy was accomplished, at least when it comes to Lori. Now they're waiting for the next trial to bring justice as well. There were so many people who camped overnight, myself included, so we could have a place in the courtroom for the sentencing. We even passed out Jolly Ranchers as a celebratory treat. Comment below if you know the significance of Jolly Ranchers. There's a bit of an inside meeting with those of us who have been on this trial from the beginning. So let me know what you think. Let's get back to the children. If the Daybell children believed Lori was the reason of all the deaths and she was convicted, why weren't they celebrating with us? I mean, I can see why they didn't want to be at the courthouse or, you know, in the trial, but many of us went past Chad's house. We wanted to see the property, see where it happened, and they were not happy with that. I won't mention any names, but let's just say the Daybell children were not at all in support of the media or the public. Now, I get it, they're sick of it, and their dad is to blame, but again, I think I would be like, if I really believed it was Lori, I think I would be joining in, maybe, I don't know. It's so hard to know how you would react to something this horrific. It, I mean, to me, it appeared that they just want the story to go away and people to quit being interested in it, but it's just not going away. JJ's grandparents are the on the opposite end. They are befriending all those who are seeking justice in the case. I remember the day I went to the trial for Lori and it was one of the worst days of all. And because it was such a horrific day, and that's when they were disclosing what happened to the children, JJ's grandfather literally went around and passed out lifesavers to every single person in the courtroom and just said, you know, I'm sorry, it's a hard day. He was just comforting everyone. What an amazing person that is. I, I'm just thinking of the psychology of the disconnect with the children about their father. And really, it's textbook. Do you think it's possible that the children are actually experiencing cognitive biases? Confirmation bias? I mean, the Daybells seem to seek out or focus on information that supports their parents' innocent. Of where are the children? Was that a moment where you questioned your father's innocence? Not my father. It goes back to what we know about him as a man, as our father. He knew how to dig graves, and I, that just doesn't sound believable to me. I do know that if he were to commit a crime, he wouldn't be foolish enough to put the evidence in his own backyard. He was framed. Focus on information that supports their parents' innocent while ignoring evidence of the contrary. And I have to say, Lori's niece seems to be doing the same thing. I find it amazing that the reasons they give for not believing their father was involved 
included things like, ah, oh, he's a grave digger, so he wouldn't have buried the bodies in such a shallow grave. Really? That's your reasoning? Well, unless he was in a hurry and didn't want to be found, I wonder how they think his phone pinged on the exact location those bodies were buried. In their minds, they can explain everything away because the alternative is too hard to bear. There, there's another term called belief perseverance, and that's even when, it, when presented with facts, the Daybell children, the Daybell's existing belief about their parents' character is still not shaken. They have excuses like, mm, if he did it, why would he bury the bodies on his own property? Again, that's your reasoning why you think it didn't happen? I mean, that's a good question, but based on his own teaching, the world was coming to an end within the year. And so no one's going to find the bodies because the world's coming to an end. He never thought he was going to be held accountable for any of this. This type of trauma, dealing with trauma, is actually a common way to emotionally deal with losing a parent in such a horrific way. Many defense mechanisms can be used when trying to cope. I personally feel that we should give the Daybell children the benefit of the doubt when it comes to the manipulation they must have had from their father and still continue to get. The tragedy of those lives that were lost continue to resonate with all of us. In the comments below, let's discuss. What surprised you most about Lori's trial? How do you think Lori's case will affect Chad Daybell's trial? And will there be additional evidence for Chad's? This is what we're gonna find out. But just remember, empathy and understanding are key even in the most difficult situations. Let's give the children the best we can with understanding where they're at and remember that they are innocent. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I plan on covering this case to the bitter end and I will see you again soon. See ya.